Welcome back. It's Sunday, December 7th, and our return to severe weather appears set today across eastern portions of the country. Severe thunderstorms, including supercells in parts of New South Wales and southern Queensland, are possible. In today's forecast, we're going to cover off on everything that you need to know ahead of these developing storms. If we start off the forecast by taking a look at our upper level pattern, we can see here today that we have a trough positioned over southern portions of the eastern border of New South Wales and Victoria. We can see here that it's a relatively defined trough. It's got a strong jet streak of around 90 knots, although it is particularly low amplitude and it will continue to traverse east during today. And this is going to be our main driving factor for severe weather. We can see here as we drag this out through the afternoon hours, we have a little bit of a region of increased wind flow across northern New South Wales or northeastern New South Wales and southeastern Queensland. We have these wind bumps pointing from the west or more or less from the southwest if you go a little bit further into New South Wales. But we can see here in the brighter colors that we do have an enhanced amount of flow around 45 to 50 knots potentially in northern New South Wales and southern Queensland and this is going to help to fuel our thunderstorms by providing the wind shear that we'll need to develop them into severe cells or potentially supercells uh, as that trough begins to traverse east out of the country. And then more broadly outside of that, we have a relatively settled pattern. We do have some weak ridging in northern portions of the country. And then we also do have that jet to the south of the country uh, that is not particularly influential right now on any weather occurring because it is positioned quite south of the country, but it is continuing to traverse east. And we also do have this particularly large scale uh, feature over here on the eastern portion of the map here outside of the country but we can see it's a relatively weak region of low pressure indicated by the wind bumps turning in the clockwise direction and some lower heights associated with that but not particularly influential on the Australian mainland and then more broadly we can see if we drag this out a little bit further we do have a ridging pattern that does begin to develop in behind this trough that moves off to the east and this will become more of the dominant pattern over the next couple of days. Now if we switch to the surface, we can see here this is the pattern that we're currently looking at today. We have a ridge in southern portions of the country. In fact, it's pretty much directly over south central South Australia. And we do have a little bit of a cold front that is still just scraping the edge of New South Wales. And we've seen that or have been tracking that through the last couple of days. And it is now progressing east of the country. And that's associated with that upper level trough. And then more broadly, we can also see these regions of low pressure. We do have a trough that's laying sort of through central Queensland and will continue to move east through today and if we drag this out to around the early afternoon hours we can see an uptick in northern New South Wales and southern Queensland in this reflectivity here we can see that especially by around 06z which would be around 4 p.m local time if you're in Queensland or 5 p.m if you're in northern New South Wales we can see that the increased reflectivity scattered across both northern and New South Wales and southern Queensland indicates the uptick of thunderstorm activity and it essentially lays on the diagonal of this trough that will extend in land and this will be our forcing mechanism today to initiate thunderstorms as well as a dry line that should develop through this region. So we do expect thunderstorms to develop in that region today and they are likely to move off to the northeast throughout the portions of the later afternoon and evening hours. We can see they progress to the northeast across the border into southeastern Queensland by the later evening, really almost tracking up the coast of southern Queensland by around 10 p.m. local time this evening and this will potentially bring some severe impacts to these regions. There is potential for large hail damaging winds and heavy rainfall and we'll look a little bit more into that as the video goes on but certainly a potential in northern New South Wales and southern Queensland this evening for severe thunderstorms and then as we drag this out we can see that the ridge becomes established over the next couple of days and there should be some relatively clearer weather in portions of the southeast as well as the west and really mainly the entire portion of the country there is a little bit of ongoing thunderstorm and shower activity obviously associated in the portions of the top end that we would expect for this time of year but relatively quiet pattern ahead for the next one to two days after today and there is some indication that we may see the very edge of a weak cold front just scraping the southern border of Victoria around Tuesday and then obviously also the eastern portions of Tasmania very minimal rainfall expected there but we probably will see a decrease in temperatures as the cold front progresses on a Tuesday just through the southern portions of Victoria and eastern Queensland so the ongoing cooler weather probably will continue through the early portions of it next week.
Now, if we switch to our lining flash map, we can see here already there's a little bit of a highlighted region just probably to the north of the Sydney and metro region. And in fact, on radar, we can actually see that there are some ongoing thunderstorms at this point in time and they are producing lightning flashes. So this is a good forecast on the, the ECMWF model. And then as we drag this out, we can see really by around the early afternoon hours, which will be around 2 to 4 p.m. local time in Queensland and northern New South Wales, we have a huge area of thunderstorm activity that will spark up through northeastern New South Wales, southeastern Queensland, and potentially the Darling Downs as well, moving a little bit west of SEQ. Uh, it is quite expansive in nature, and it's really developing on the back of that trough that we saw earlier. It'll likely develop in this region through the early afternoon hours, and then as previously discussed, as the system moves to the northeast, we do see a concentration of lightning flashes really around the New South Wales-Queensland border, and potentially even into the Brisbane metro. Some potential thunderstorm activity may actually expand into to the western Darling Downs and maybe even into central Queensland. We also have an accumulation of lightning flashes or a large amount of lightning flashes in northern WA as well as portions of the NT and then it really expands through the central NT and then in western Queensland and of course back to SEQ and northern New South Wales but we can see that the thunderstorm activity definitely subsides by around midnight hours so the thunderstorm activity will likely be the most intense through the later afternoon hours and early evening this afternoon. Now if we switch and take a look at what's driving this thunderstorm activity we can see it offshore in the eastern portions of the country we have these really bright colors and this measures cape so this is convective available potential energy or essentially thunderstorm juice or how much energy thunderstorms would have to use in the atmosphere if they were to develop it's one of the mixture of ingredients that we look for for thunderstorms to develop and we can see here particularly through the early morning that this cape was offshore during a saturday evening begins to migrate into northern new south wales and southern Queensland and we can see really by around at the afternoon hours we have a good concentration in the southern portions of Queensland and northern or northeastern New South Wales and the most intense concentration of the Cape is actually into very far eastern portions of northeastern New South Wales. It's relatively confined to coastal regions. In fact, we could be seeing around 2,500 joules per kilogram of peak Cape which is definitely enough to initiate severe thunderstorms. In fact, it'll easily support supercells with that wind shear that we saw earlier that is available today. So the most intense thunderstorms would likely be confined to portions of northeastern New South Wales. There could certainly be thunderstorm activity elsewhere and there will likely be thunderstorm activity through the Darling Downs, southeastern Queensland and then northeastern New South Wales. But the most intense thunderstorms are likely confined to the coastal region where the Cape is strongest. They could potentially push into the southern border of Queensland, but supercell development will likely be quite isolated today if they do occur just purely because of the confined nature of the best in stability being fairly coastally located although there's still a very large environment where other thunderstorms could develop potentially non-severe but they could also be severe in nature with a squall line developing probably in southern but again the greatest potential for intense thunderstorms being supercells or becoming very dangerous will likely be confined to the coastal regions including Coffs Harbour, Grafton, Yamba and potentially as high as the Queensland border. Now if we switch to simulated radar reflectivity on the Axis C high resolution convective allowing model we can see here that there is some ongoing shower and potentially thunderstorm activity through northeastern New South Wales by around early afternoon hours or around midday and this will continue to clear off into the coastal regions but we can see thunderstorms spiking up behind this line indicating that the instability is still likely available in the environment and can support thunderstorm development and then as we drag this out we can see that the thunderstorm activity becomes much more expansive in northeastern New South Wales really developing around in the Glen Innes area Area and then tracking toward the coast we can see that it sparks up very quickly by around 4 p.m. local time and then into the later afternoon hours 5 p.m. 6 p.m. and then we have a large amount of sustained cells we can see some super cells being indicated here in the high reflectivity valleys around Grafton and Yamba as well as potentially around the southern Queensland border indicated here in the high reflectivity valleys which are the purples whites and reds and these could potentially continue to track to the northeast and some of these may actually be able to sustain themselves until they pass over the coast. The threats in these areas would likely become giant hail and destructive winds for with any sustained supercells that could develop. And then more broadly, large hail and damaging winds could be a threat with any MCS or mesoscale convective system complex clusters that do develop. These again, most likely moving to the northeast through the later evening hours. And that's pretty much going to do it for today's forecast. We've got severe thunderstorms possible this evening in northeastern New South Wales and southern Queensland with the potential 
for higher end severe hazards being giant hail and destructive winds. Live coverage will continue on the page and we'll catch you back in the next forecast tomorrow.